Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. I am your runner runner. Welcome back to another Airsoft video at Central City Airsoft in Central City, Iowa. Here are some of the new players that are being very, very friendly to me this morning. So I don't want to feral flash everybody. And we're going to get the day started off with a quick TDM, get the blood flowing, and uh, we'll uh, see if I am as bad here as I am in Colorado. Welcome back to another gameplay video. I am so happy to bring this to you guys because this video is going to be more, actually this video series is going to be more of a first impressions that I had of Central City Airsoft. The reason it's going to be more of a first impressions instead of just like highlighting some gameplay is because I played absolutely atrociously. On top of not really knowing the field and <laughs> just getting murdered all day long my gameplay was not good. What was good was everybody who welcomed me to the field. The field itself and how everybody out there was just super, super awesome as a player. So let's go in and highlight some of that. If you guys like what you see here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below as well as share this video with all of your friends because that makes YouTube very, very happy. And we want to make those people happy for reasons, I don't know, I guess we want to make them happy. But yeah, do all that stuff for me and I will let you guys know kind of what's going on here. I thought those were our friendlies. I got two friendlies over here. At this point of the gameplay, I made my way through the dunes, which is a trench system that runs from one side of the field to the other and provides some pretty decent cover. Um, right now, I'm actually outside of the trench system, the dunes, over by the city, which I believe is on the north end of the field. I'd have to uh, get my geography correct, but I believe that's on the north end of the field, and I am facing towards the south east of the field which down there you go down a ravine across a creek and then they have the tiki town which is another structure based uh, part of the field um both of these fields have a lot of cover both of them had two-story towers but i guess some bad weather and a tree took out one of their two-story towers but one of them is still up right there is tiki town uh, I am on top of the ridge shooting down, trying to make use of my range here, which <laughs> didn't really help me uh, on that day because the players definitely knew their field and they definitely took advantage of it. And it was just, it was a great day. The field staff was absolutely awesome. They all rotated out between playing and refing the different games. Seems like we always had two refs on the field. Pretty sure we always had two refs on the field, one for both uh, sides of the game to monitor both teams. Uh, and they did a pretty decent job about making sure they were always next to the players and uh, they were constantly uh, yelling out and watching when grenades were thrown, the EG uh, 67s or the EG 64, whatever the bangers are. Whenever a banger went off, they were there, they would call it, they would say hit or no hit or you know whatever, which was really awesome. They had a 10 foot kill radius on all grenades. So uh, for the refs to constantly be there monitoring all of the players and all of the action and being like right in the middle of it was really, really cool to see, as well as just having honest players out on the field that day. That also helps. Good shot. Good shot. Now let's talk about how the field plays here. The field plays very interestingly because it's somewhat circular. The way that where they have the spawns set up, the spawns aren't set up true north and true south. They're kind of like northeast and southwest. Um, it, it's very, very different. Very interesting. The field runs somewhat circularly. People don't run down the gut of the field very often. People either bank hard right or bank hard left, and then they'll kind of come in on those flanks. And so the center of the field is actually rather open. Uh, compared to a lot of fields that I have uh, played on. You know, a lot of times you can kind of make that dash right through the center, but that's kind of a kill zone there. Um, the dunes over here that I'm entering right now, these are really interesting. They're high enough up that if you just crouch down a little bit while you're moving through them, people can almost not hit you. They're also 
hugely effective as cover. I saw several players laying down in them uh, when we were playing a, a different sort of uh, game later that day. I saw people who were able to use these effectively to move and to hide themselves and sneak up on other people. So it's really awesome to play in a trench system. It's actually something I've always wanted to do. Uh, having the two towns on either end of the field, the north and the south ends, and then a big open area, and then having the dunes on uh, the east side of the field, I believe. Uh, yeah, the east side of the field. And then just an open area with roads in the middle and trees and coverage. Very interesting uh, dynamic. So you have your open field, your cities, your towns, your you know your dune areas with some some co with, with some natural cover and obviously man-made uh, cover. Popping too much. Uh, overall, the field itself plays really really well. I think I just have to learn it. <laughs> that was my big issue. Is I didn't I didn't know where people could see from or where they can't see from or what lanes that they would typically take and so you know it's uh it's gonna take me a minute here but overall i'm I, I like it i like it i want to i want to get back out to it and see if i can uh see if i can maximize my potential on this field all right there's my second mag gone So to wrap up this video, let's talk about the rule set of the field. Uh, for the most part, it's a fairly standardized rule set. Uh, they do still chrono under the FPS rule set, which uh, I have found is a little bit outdated, but however, it's an insurance thing. Their insurance uh, company says this is how you'll do it, so if you want to have an airsoft field and you want to be insured, you do what the insurance company tells you. So that's perfectly fine. In addition to that, they also have a few things that I am not used to. Uh, gun hits count here. So with gun hits counting, uh, you cannot be as cavalier hanging the end of your barrel out of a window or um, uh, or, or just you, you have to be very, very careful if something bounces off my camera on my guns, uh, which, I, uh, which I am I have always, always been used to just, oh, hey, gun hit, you know, I'm not out. Now I had to go, oh, gun hit. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, that's that, that's a kill. I'm, I'm gone. I'm dead. I got to go walk back. So that was the other thing. The other thing, and it didn't seem to come up today, and it doesn't come up very often uh, because of the size of the field, is that it is, there is a 10-foot bang rule, period. If you are within 10 foot of another player, you have to do bang, bang. Um, that rule is in place predominantly to help uh, newer players and rental players, which I understand, but it is something I'm going to have to get used to. I am not a fan of bang rules. I like bang rules that are optional, not mandatory. And so those are a couple of the things that I think in the future, if they could ever change them, that would be cool. Otherwise, all I have to do is just get used to those few things and I'm gonna continue to play on this field. So thank you all for checking out this video and I look forward to seeing you all next time right here on Runner Runner Airsoft.